Under these vibrant blue waters, coral reefs, often called the gardens of the sea, are like jewels beneath the waves. Countless marine creatures call them home, and they're also a lifeline for people. However, these coral reefs are facing an unprecedented crisis, bleaching. So in this episode of our special series, Coral Reefs Whisper, we use XR technology to dive into the South China Sea to uncover why are corals losing their colors and what does this mean for our ocean? It's getting warmer. Can you feel it? My colors are fading. My strength is slipping away. What you are seeing right now is one of the biggest challenges the coral reefs worldwide are facing, bleaching. But first, let's find out where their brilliant colors come from. The coral skeleton, like the one I'm holding, is actually white. Those beautiful colors we see mostly come from tiny algae called zooxanthellae that live inside the coral. When seawater gets too warm for too long, that's when mass bleaching happens. When temperature rises, corals expel algae, and that's why they turn white. But bleaching doesn't mean death, at least not right away. As my colors fade, I'm struggling to survive. Without the algae, I can't make the energy I need. If the waters stay warm for too long, I might not make it. And bleaching isn't something just happening here, it's a global crisis. Most recently, the International Coral Reef Initiative announced about 84% of the Earth coral reefs have been impacted in a mass bleaching event. Take Great Barrier Reef, for example, Australian scientists are also seeing stress, as morality events are occurring at an unprecedented rate. This current fourth global mass bleaching event started in the Caribbean in the summer of 2023. It has continued to on-go and impact Australian reefs in 2024, Western Australia reefs in 2025. So this fourth mass bleaching event um, continues to impact reefs around the world, which is a clear sign that the ocean warming and the climate change impacts are a global pressure. But bleaching is not the end of the coral story. When corals die, their skeletons break apart and over time form something we call caves or sandbars. And here in the South China Sea, several of these caves already exist. When coral reefs are healthy, they produce very little rubble, so there's not much material to move. But when many corals die, broken fragments pile up, and waves and monsoons can carry them ashore. Scientists say the formation of caves is a natural phenomenon, but some media outlets claim that caves are evidence that China has dumped crushed corals into the South China Sea to build artificial islands and they even posted photos. Kays have no plants, so they're unstable. When a big storm hits a K, it shifts, revealing fresh slopes covered with new coral rubble. It might look like artificial filling, but it's entirely natural. I captured such a phenomenon in 2016 at TS Yinjiao, right after a storm, and again in 2018 at Niue Jiao. Coral reefs and caves are not battlegrounds for finger pointing. They are signs of how nature adapts and evolves. Here in the South China Sea, building and protecting the ocean don't have to be at odds, not if we lead with science, put the environment first, and think long term. So, this is a bleached coral simulation. Its colors are gone. If you see this on the real seabed, it could still be alive. And if you want to see it thrive again, that's something we can only achieve together.